I'm going to share my top 10 metal albums of 2011. There are a lot of great records that came out last year, a lot of good ones coming out this year. Um, new Burzum in May, and um, next month, new uh, Napalm Death. So I'm pretty excited for those. I just found that out, so I thought I'd throw that in real quick. But uh, my top 10 are as follows. Number 10, Flesh God Apocalypse's Agony album. Now, this album was a great technical death metal album. Um, their first one was a bit better, a bit more technical. Uh, the guitar work was way better. Um, they kind of pulled the Demi Borg gear and they kind of put way too much stuff in this one. You know, a, a lot of, uh, you know, really melodic, you know, parts that I, I think, you know, overshadowed the guitar. I think the guitar could have, you know, done a lot better, but, you know, the, the drumming is really well done. The vocals are on point. I mean, for all intents and purposes, it's a great death metal record, and I would go pick it up still. It's it's really good. Um, number nine, Pathology is Awakened to the Suffering. Now that record was um, really, really well done. A little different because Matty Way wasn't on it. Um, they got the guy from I Declare War now. And uh, his vocal style, you know, for that band was different than Pathology. So it works because it's very, uh, very heavy, very... Um, you know, deep guttural vocals, um, a little different than Deathcore, which, you know, obviously I like a bit better. Um, I was kind of worried he was going to do some Deathcore stuff and kind of make it sound different, but it, it's, still, it's still pathology, it's still a good record, it's still great brutal death metal, and hopefully I'll be seeing them tomorrow so I can tell you guys all about how well he does live. Um, just overall, it was a good record. I mean, it, it missed the mark, you know, for me all in all, but I would still give it a 7 out of 10. I would still pick it up just because I love the band so much, but if you're just kind of a casual pathology listener, I probably wouldn't get it, but I still put it on my list because it's still a really good record. Um, number 8 would be Worm Rot's Dirge album. Now this is a very, very good grindcore band, very good grindcore album. Um, it's very fast, it's very heavy, it's everything you expect from a grind band. Um, it's you know, just really, really heavy and fast and aggressive, and you know, it just it, you blow through the tracks incredibly fast. But it that's it, you know what grindcore is. <laughs> you don't really just sit there and expect it to last, you know, an hour long. You know, unless they put like a hundred and something tracks on it, which they didn't do. But there's a few bands out there like Gorefuck and Nosebleed that do that that I really enjoy. But uh, this is just really fast old school grindcore. Uh, they've been getting a lot of buzz lately in the uh, underground metal scene. Um, they played OEF last year, which is a Obscene Extreme Festival, which is a grindcore festival that I'm not sure how long it lasts. I think it's a couple days because they have easily over 100 bands. Um, it's kind of like the gathering for grindcore heads, which you know is one of my dreams to go there one of those days and you know visit it and you know experience the craziness that is OEF. Um, you just type that into YouTube and look at all the crazy shit that happens, and you'll see why I want to go so bad. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. There's like no rules. You get to dance up on the stage. You know, you can jump up on the stage and, you know, walk around naked. They don't fucking care. You know, you can, you know, run around in a fucking banana suit with a fucking gas mask on. Nobody gives a shit. You know, it's just a fun fucking time. You know, just running around to gore grind and grindcore bands, just having fun and shit. So that's definitely something I would love to do. And, uh, Worm Rot's record was really, really good, and I'm glad they got to play that uh, at OEF, and, you know, hopefully I'll be catching their tour uh, during, I believe, the summertime uh, this year. They're coming to U uh, the U.S. Right now they're doing a European tour, so uh, definitely getting a lot of buzz in the underground. I would check them out. I believe they're on Eric Records, so definitely check that out. Um, Blood Freaks Mindscraper is number seven. Now, this is a very, very good uh, gore grind band. Uh, very reminiscent of Lord Gore and uh, Frightmare because Maniac Neil, the vocalist of both those bands, are in this band. Uh, he kind of started it after he started Frightmare. And um, this is kind of the main project he's been doing since Lord Gore doesn't exist anymore. And uh, I don't think he's doing Frightmare either. Um, so uh, both those bands are kind of split up right now. But Blood Freak's a really, really good uh, gore grind band. Really heavy, really good riffing. The vocals are incredibly heavy and guttural and just really, really well done. It's it's an incredible record. My friend ended up buying it when we were listening to it in the car, and it just blew me away how good it was because I was slacking on buying it, and I should have bought it because he bought the one copy that was there, so I should have got it before him. But 
still pretty awesome. Uh, Dodgebird Spitting it with Hatred, The Insignificance of Life is number six. An incredible black metal album, one of the best ones that came out last year. There were a few, but last year was not the year for black metal, really. Um, in my opinion, there are only three or four records that came out last year that were worth listening to, really. Uh, quite a few other ones came out, like uh, Sargeist Let the Devil In, which kind of let me down a bit. Um, a few birds and CDs came out, a few other things here and there, which I might mention. But um, this record is really good. It's an incredibly good Dodsford album. If you're a fan of Dodsford or any type of uh, black metal in uh, the vein of uh, their sound, which I really can't describe, I'm not really sure exactly <laughs> what to call them. Not quite ambient, not quite you know, raw, they're not, well, them. they're kind of raw, but it, it's hard to explain, but they're a really, really good, uh, uh, really good band, um, you know, really heavy, really aggressive, really, you know, full of hatred and anger and rebellion, which is what black metal should sound like, not this orthodox, satanic black metal crap that all sounds the same, just like the, uh, you know, Death Spell Omega album that came out two years ago disappointed the fuck out of me, you know, because it sounded like every other orthodox black metal band out there, and that style is way too popular and it draws me the fuck away from it um, which is disappointing because black metal is probably my favorite genre of music even though most people know me as a huge death metal fan you know I love black metal and the last couple of years I've not been listening to it because the bands are disappointing the shit out of me I've been listening to the you know early 90s black metal bands because those actually are rebellious and angry and have a fucking point all these other bands don't have much of a point besides being you know blasphemous and you know, shocking on purpose. You know, Watain is probably the one band that's, you know, not like that. I mean, they're like that, but they do it in a way that's, you know, reminiscent of the old bands, and they, they bring something back to you know, black metal that is missing, in my opinion. So, you know, this record was really good and really refreshing for me. Um, number five, Duran Gray's Dumb Spiro Sparrow. This record was incredibly good, one of Darren Gray's best. It was incredibly heavy. It was um, very different, very technical, very um, you know reminiscent of like actual metal instead of like this you know metalcore screamo sound that they had last you know I think it was two records ago. Uh, Marrow the Bone. I actually saw that tour and I was disappointed at uh, Kilo screaming because it was not as good as it, as it is now. Um, I think he kind of stopped smoking cigarettes as much as he used to so I think that helped his voice a bit um, but he's been training it and getting it better and I think he definitely hits all the marks with this um, you check all the boxes and it just it blows you away it's an incredible record very well done very visual very heavy very just really really well done record um, I'm very disappointed I missed the tour for that um, a couple months ago but they're doing another US tour soon unfortunately they're gonna be with a bunch of crappy bands but I'm still gonna try and make it just because they put on one hell of a live show because I've seen them twice now and it's just it's a fun time every time um, so this record is definitely uh, definitely worth the number five spot um, I definitely give it a nine out of ten it's probably one of their best records and one of my favorite number four Burzum's Fallen record now, he got out of jail in 2009, uh, came out with Bellis, blew everybody away, very reminiscent of the old 90s black metal style, very, uh, you know, very cold feeling, very angry feeling. It was an incredible record. Um, and then uh, Fallen came out and was a little bit ambient, a little bit angry, a little bit of everything that he kind of did in his career just all together. And... I think it really shined. I think it was a very good record. I disagree with everyone saying that it was crap and that they want, you know, Journey to the Stars type uh, sound again. Although that's a very good song and, you know, his uh, first album and, uh, you know, the first like three albums are very good, but, you know, you can't live in the past. You gotta, you know, everyone has to move on at some point. They have to evolve. If you're, the, you know, even doing the same sound for 20 years, you're not a good band. You're you're not evolving. You're not changing. You're not doing anything. You're just living in the past because that's what people want. So that's what and what they expect. And I like bands that do things that are different that you don't expect. And you're like, whoa, 
You know, that's really cool that they decided to do that. Some people may not like it, but fuck it. You know, if you want to do it, you should do it. And that's what uh, Varga's doing with his music. He's doing what he wants to do, what he feels, uh, you know, sounds good to him. And I really respect that, and I really enjoy this record. I definitely give it a 10 out of 10. It's an incredible record. I'm disappointed I haven't got it yet. My friend bought it. We listened to it in the car on the way home from a concert once, and I was mesmerized the whole time. It was it was great. Uh, number three, Exhumes All Guts No Glory, which I did end up picking up because Exhumed is one of my favorite gore grind bands. Incredibly heavy, incredibly uh, gory, very uh, reminiscent of uh, Carcass, General Surgery, uh, Hemorrhage, uh, bands like that, which is one of my favorite styles of grindcore. You know, very, very aggressive and fast, and the riffing was really well done. I mean, the, the songs were structured very, uh, very good. A um, little different than their older stuff, but, you know, the vocal styles sounded very similar to the older stuff. Uh, the drumming was very similar. Um, they had a lot of, you know, a lot of the same time signatures and stuff, but, uh, you know, overall it was, an, a, you know, kind of, you know, like taking the old and kind of throwing it in and making it new, kind of revitalizing it, but not being completely the same. And I really enjoyed that. I thought it was great. Um, number two, Abysmal Dawn's Loving the Plane of Existence. And that record was really, really good. I played it for probably two or three months straight in my car. And it just, every day I listened to it, and it got better and better. I still listen to it all the time. I still need to buy it, but I did download it, and you know, I do plan on buying it, because I believe if you download an album, you should buy it. Um, so I try to do with everything I download, which is going to mean as soon as I get money I'll be broke because I'll be buying like 50 albums you know like a month or something but I don't care because it's worth it to support the bands that's why I'm glad I saw them on the uh, Hate Eternal and Origin show so I did uh, support them by buying a ticket <laughs> so you know I don't feel as bad for downloading the album but it was a great album I definitely recommend people pick it up it's very 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 technical very heavy um, they're a very good band they're not that old really they're only a few years old but they're very good very tight-knit you know band they, they've got their sound you know they've got everything going for them they just need a bigger fan base because uh, they were the first band to open up the show and they kind of you know didn't have a whole lot of people you know there to see them but I was there in the front just you know headbanging the whole time it was it was great the performance was amazing and uh, they performed it just like they did on the record and you know I give you know major props to them they're an incredible band one of the best in technical death metal especially since the decapitated album last year disappointed the fuck out of me it's I wasn't even gonna mention it because it's not worth mentioning they, they pulled the morbid angel and you know everyone you know knows how I feel about the morbid angel album that came out last year very very disappointing so yeah, hearing some really good technical death metal made me a little bit happier for the genre as a whole <laughs> um, so I definitely recommend that album and number one would be Origins Entity album which I also ended up picking up because it is an incredible record one of my favorite death metal bands and uh, it just overall was an incredible record it blew me away you know songs like Saligula, The Descent, Forever Conceiving Death and uh, Expulsion of Fury are just amazing they're incredibly fast, incredibly heavy they just pound your face in and Every track is just relentlessly heavy, and, uh, you know, it's just one of the heaviest three-piece bands I've ever heard in my life. I mean, they have, you know, more people now for, you know, the uh, live session, but uh, they have live session uh, players, but still, overall, it's an incredible three-piece record because they recorded it as a three-piece, and um, it just, it's, I don't know, I don't have enough time to really explain it, because I'm running out of time here, so I'm going to cut it right here, I'm just going to say that it was an incredibly good record, it was heavy as fuck, and I just, I love it, man. So that's, that's my 2011 uh, favorite records, and uh, keep it fucking metal, and much clown love, whoop whoop.